Hello hockey fans and welcome back to another video. As the year 2020 gradually draws to its long awaited conclusion, many European countries have somehow managed to begin and subsequently maintain their 2021 hockey seasons despite domestic lockdowns and postponed matches threatening their survival. One league in particular that has dealt with much of the latter in recent weeks is Switzerland's National League A the country's premier flight of competition, which is home to both former NHL regulars and young up-and-coming prospects, many of whom will soon make their way to North America in the coming years. Since we have already explored the notable NHL alumni in the KHL and the SHL this season, and given that Switzerland has become a hotspot for former league mainstays thanks to their widespread use of the English language, it's only logical that the NLA be the next stop in our tour across Europe. So in today's video, allow me to take you through my list of 10 former NHLers playing in the Swiss National League this season. Kicking off our list at number 10, we have Sven Andragetto. The only Swiss-born player to feature on this list, Sven Andragetto has quickly made an impact in his native league during his first year back home. A third round pick by the Montreal Canadiens during the 2013 draft, Andragetto would suit up in parts of five seasons in the NHL, split between the Habs and the Colorado Avalanche, scoring 31 goals and 83 points in 216 games for his efforts. Following his final season with the Avs in 1819, the Swiss forward would head across the pond for the following year in order to join KHL side Avangard Omsk on a one year deal. After producing a 27-point year with the team, Andragetto decided to take his career back to his homeland for the first time since 2011 and rejoin the organisation he had played for all those years ago, as he signed a five-year contract with the NLA Zurich Lions for the current 2021 season. Since then, Andragetto has taken to the ice with Zurich and has wasted little time becoming one of the Lions' most productive players. The 27-year-old has scored 9 points in 11 games so far this year, which puts him on pace to register one of, if not the most productive season of his entire pro career. Given that he is signed for another 4 years after this season is over, I think this pairing between player and organisation could be a match made in heaven for both parties. After all, becoming a go-to guy on a top roster back home and getting paid a decent chunk of change to do so for the next four years sounds like a pretty fun way to spend the prime years of your career if you ask me, folks. Next up at number 9 we have Mark Barbario. The only defenseman on this list, Mark Barbario is certainly making a strong first impression during his debut year across the pond. A 6th round pick by the Tampa Bay Lightning in 2008, Barbario would spend several years refining his game in the minors before finally making his NHL debut with Tampa in 2013. From there, Barbario would go on to spend parts of 8 seasons in the league, split between the Lightning, the Montreal Canadiens and the Colorado Avalanche, where he scored 14 goals and 56 points in 272 games. After a 22-game stint with Colorado during the 2019-20 season, the Canadian defenseman decided that instead of serving as the 7th or 8th D-man on the depth chart and spending much of the next few years in the AHL, he would take a real crack at playing overseas, so he signed a 3-year contract with Swiss league side Lausanne HC for the current season. Over the last few months, Barbario's debut year in Europe has gotten off to a great start, thanks to his decent production on the scoreboard and his unmatched presence in the locker room. In fact, the former 6th round pick currently serves as the captain of Lausanne's roster and has scored 5 points in his first 10 games of the season. Not bad numbers for a defensive defenseman, eh folks? Given that Lausanne currently sit at the top of the NLA standings and have a pretty comfortable cushion above the rest of the league, I would imagine that Lausanne are quite happy to have Barbario on board for the next few years. At number 8 we have Matt D'Agostini. Arguably the most obscure name on this list in the year 2020, Matt D'Agostini has become anything but to long-time fans of the Swiss League. A 6th round pick by the Montreal Canadiens during the 2005 draft, D'Agostini took to the ice in parts of 7 seasons in the NHL split between 5 different teams, where he scored 52 goals and 107 points in 321 games for his efforts. Following a half-season stint with the Buffalo Sabres in 13-14, the Canadian forward took his talents across the pond and joined NLA side Geneva Servette HC for the 14-15 season. 
His debut year in Switzerland must have left a pretty good impression on him though, as the forward has played in the Swiss League every year since, splitting the last six seasons of his career between Geneva and HC Ambri Piotta. During this time, D'Agostini has earned a reputation as one of the league's most consistent forwards, having potted 92 goals and 199 points in 239 regular season games between the years 2014 and 2020. This season, D'Agostini continues to suit up for Ambri Piotta as he embarks on his fifth year with the team, and with four points in his first eight games of the season, the 34-year-old might not put up the same impressive numbers that fans have come to expect from him, but he will no doubt continue to be a very serviceable player in Switzerland's top league. Next, at number seven, we have Victor Stolberg. The first of three players on this list who won a Stanley Cup championship during their NHL career, Victor Stolberg has seen his game shift from bottom six special teams expert in North America to high scoring top six forward since his move closer to home. A sixth round pick by the Toronto Maple Leafs back in 2006, Stolberg suited up in 488 NHL games, split over eight seasons with half a dozen teams, scoring 82 goals and 168 points in the process, and winning the 2013 Stanley Cup as a member of the Chicago Blackhawks. After an 18-game stint with the Ottawa Senators to conclude the 16-17 season, the Swedish forward headed back overseas for the first time since the 2012 lockout and signed a two-year contract with NLA side EV Zug. Having spent the next year and a half in Switzerland, where he put up 25 goals and 57 points in just 56 regular season games, Stolberg would leave the league before the 18-19 season was up, spend the rest of the year in the KHL with Avangard Omsk, before returning to the Swiss League for the 2019-20 season, thanks to signing a two-year contract with HC Freeborg Gotteren. Since then, Stolberg has taken to the ice exclusively for Freeborg and has continued to be a productive player in the NLA, as he scored 14 goals and 31 points in 46 games during his first year with the team. With four points in his first six games of the current season, and with his contract expiring at the end of the year, I wouldn't be surprised if the 34-year-old either re-signed with Freeborg or joined a different team in the NLA as his career begins to wind down. He certainly earned it with his recent play, you know. Next up at number six, we have Marcus Kruger. The only player on this list to have his name written on the Stanley Cup more than once, Marcus Kruger may not have been the most productive player at the NHL level, but his knowledge of his role on a team and his ability to play that role very well have made him quite a valuable commodity across the pond. A fifth round pick by the Chicago Blackhawks during the 2009 draft, Kruger took to the ice in 520 NHL games over parts of nine seasons split between the Blackhawks and the Carolina Hurricanes, where he scored 38 goals and 123 points and won both the 2013 and the 2015 Stanley Cup as a member of the Blackhawks. Following a brief return to Chicago during the 18-19 season after his lone year with Carolina, the Swedish forward moved back to Europe for the first time since the 10-11 season and took his talents to the Swiss League, as he signed a two-year contract with the Zurich Lions for the 2019-20 season. Over the last few years, Kruger has been a member of Zurich's roster, and though he only scored 19 points in 34 games during his debut year with the team, the 30-year-old forward has potted four points in 10 games so far this year. If he can stay healthy and keep putting the puck in the net, I don't see why he couldn't at least match or even surpass last season's totals by the end of the year. If he doesn't though, his strengths on the defensive side of the puck and his championship experience should be more than enough to earn him a new deal in the Swiss League or elsewhere in Europe once the season comes to an end. Halfway through this list now at number 5 we have David Deharnay. Another player who has spent the last few seasons overseas following a lengthy NHL career, David Deharnay is making quite the impact in Switzerland, both on the scoreboard and in the locker room. An undrafted forward in each of his years of eligibility, Deharnay was able to earn a contract with the Montreal Canadiens in 2008 thanks to a few impressive seasons in the minors. The Canadian forward would then take his newfound opportunity and go on to play parts of nine seasons in the league split between the Habs, the Edmonton Oilers and the New York Rangers, where he notched 87 goals and 282 points in 520 NHL games. 
Once his lone year in New York was over at the conclusion of the 1718 season, Dehane took his talents overseas and spent a year in the KHL with Avantgarde Omsk before signing a two-year contract with HC Freeborg Gotteren for the 2019-20 season. However, this wasn't the first time that Dehane had played in the Swiss League or with Freeborg, as he had spent several months on the team during the 2012 lockout and had scored 16 points in 16 games in the process. Since then, Dehane has spent the last season and a half with Gotterun, serving as an alternate captain of the team and scoring 26 points in 36 games during his first full year in the league. With two points in four games during the current 2021 season, the Canadian forward will likely produce similar numbers to his year prior, and given that he is in the final year of his contract, I expect that the 34-year-old will be given a chance to stick around for the foreseeable future, thanks to both his production and his importance to the locker room. Next up at number 4 we have Vladimir Sobotka, the only player on this list to join the NLA after the season had already begun, Vladimir Sobotka has been no stranger to spending several years of his pro career overseas. A fourth round pick by the Boston Bruins back in 2005, Sobotka spent parts of 11 seasons in the NHL, split between the Bruins, the St. Louis Blues and the Buffalo Sabres, notching 53 goals and 171 points in 548 games for his efforts. During the midst of his NHL career though, Sobotka would take a three year trip to the KHL where he joined Avangard Omsk and scored 37 goals and 102 points in 138 games. God, what is it with all of these players joining Avangard Omsk before coming to the Swiss League? Having returned to North America for the 1718 season and having suited up in just 16 games with the Sabres during the most recent 2019 20 season, the Czech forward decided to move back across the pond for the current year but instead of joining the KHL, he signed with the Swiss League's Rappersville Yona Lakers. Now I will admit that this pick comes with a pretty big asterisk, as Sobotka is no longer playing for Rappersville after scoring two points in four games with the team. Why you might be asking? Well according to Rappersville, the team had signed Sobotka to a short term deal as an injury replacement while Lakers forward Steve Moses was out of the lineup. But now that Moses is back and healthy again, the team no longer have a place in their lineup for Sobotka. This prompted Rappersville to waive Sobotka's contract option, which would have extended his deal with the team until the end of the year, meaning that the Czech forward has become an unrestricted free agent once again. Despite this unceremonious end to his deal, he is hoping that Sobotka can find another Swiss team interested in him and he can stick around the league for the rest of the year. At least then I could remove the asterisk from this pick. At number 3 we have Eric Fair. The final Stanley Cup champion to be featured on this list, Eric Fair has already produced a long and successful pro career in North America, but shows no signs of slowing down in Switzerland anytime soon. The 18th overall pick of the 2003 draft, Fair would take to the ice in 652 NHL games over 14 seasons between half a dozen teams, where he scored 113 goals and 221 points and won the 2016 Stanley Cup as a member of the Pittsburgh Penguins. After spending the 18-19 season with the Minnesota Wild, the Canadian forward decided to make the move across the pond and spent his twilight years in Europe, as he signed a one-year contract with NLA side Geneva Servette HC for the 2019-20 season. In fact, Fair continues to play for Geneva during the current 2021 season, having earned a one-year contract extension with the team thanks to scoring 34 points in 44 games during his debut year. With an impressive 10 points in just 6 games so far this season, and with 7 of those points being goals, the 35 year old is on pace to completely smash his goal total from last season. He may be coming to the end of his career folks, but Eric Fair clearly still has some good hockey left to play. Penultimately at number 2 we have Daniel Winnick. The veteran of the most NHL games on this list, Daniel Winnick may have become known for his bottom six play and work on the penalty kill in North America, but in the Swiss League he has become quite the productive scorer. A ninth round pick by the Phoenix Coyotes in 2004, back when there was still a ninth round pick in the draft, Winnick went on to play parts of 11 seasons in the NHL split between 8 different teams, scoring 82 goals and 251 points in 798 games for his efforts. After a lone year with the Minnesota Wild during the 17-18 season, and having played his entire career in North America up until that point, 
the Canadian forward decided that he wanted to take on another challenge across the pond. So he signed a one-year contract with the NLA's Geneva Servette HC for the 1819 season. Once in Switzerland, Winnick would make a great first impression for his new team. So much so that he continues to play for Geneva to this very day, having earned himself a two-year contract extension thanks to potting 31 points in 41 games during his debut year. With a further 44 points in 49 games during his sophomore season, Winnick showed Geneva that his extension was money well spent, as he had scored 28 goals and 75 points in 90 games over the last two years of his career. With six points in his first six games of the current 2021 season, Winnick could perhaps record his best year yet, and with his contract up at the end of the season, the 35-year-old will likely receive another offer either from Geneva or elsewhere in the league, provided he still wants to play hockey for another year or two. Before we reach the top pick of this list, I want to give a quick honourable mention to San Jose Sharks legend and future Hall of Famer Joe Thornton, who is currently playing for HC Davos and has scored four points in three games so far with the team. Yes, I know he signed with the Toronto Maple Leafs recently, and I know he'll be back in North America once the NHL season gets underway, but given his performance in the best league in the world, the numbers he's put up throughout his career, and this being his third stint playing with Davos, the other two being during the 04, 05 and 2012 lockouts, it made sense to add him somewhere on this list. To make up for it, here's an interesting fact for you folks. Joe Thornton actually holds Swiss citizenship, meaning he doesn't count as an import player on Davos's roster, so the team can dress another international player alongside him. Bet you didn't know that, did you? And finally, at number one, we have Mikhail Bodka. The player on this list with the most points scored during his NHL career, not including Joe Thornton of course, Mikhail Bodka tops our list by bringing his high-scoring talents to the NLA for the next few years. The 8th overall pick of the 2008 draft by the Phoenix Coyotes, Bodka took to the ice in 709 NHL games over 12 seasons, split between the Coyotes, the Colorado Avalanche, the San Jose Sharks and the Ottawa Senators, scoring 118 goals and 327 points in the process. Having spent the 2019-20 season with the Senators, but having played just 20 games that year due to injuries, the Danish forward decided that his time in North America had come to an end, as he signed a two-year contract with Swiss league side HC Lugano for the 2021 season. With three points in his first six games so far with the team, Bodka hasn't fully adjusted yet and is still finding his rhythm overseas. However, with over half the season still left to play, the Danish forward has plenty of time to find his footing and light up the scoreboard before the year is up. Even if he doesn't though, the 30-year-old is under contract for another year after, so I expect him to regain his goal-scoring touch as he gets used to calling Lugano his home for the coming months. And that was my list of 10 former NHLers playing in the Swiss National League this season. What do you guys think about this list? Was there a name that you weren't expecting to hear, or did I leave somebody completely obvious out? Also, is there another league that you would like me to look at that NHL alumni? Let me know in the comments below, I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching guys, I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye! A big thank you to Carl Fairbank, Chris Gadsby, Connor B, Jordan Whitehead, Paul Malia, Roman from London, The Legacy, Tom from Finland and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.